You know, every other day we always say Nigeria is a rich nation. But then we have such a huge burden of the poor and vulnerable, millions of people, and that is a constant. So it's a no-brainer when we say we need to cut the cost of governance. We need to cut our coat according to our material, whichever way the saying goes. So it was a bit cheery to hear that the FEC had approved some partial implementation of that Oronsaya report since 2012. It's taken 12 years to get to this point. But let's get even deeper into this conversation. It concerns you and I, whether you're young or old. This conversation around governance and the cost of it concerns you and I. I will be speaking uh, with uh, well, an agency that is also central to the implementation of this report. We're joined on the program by the Director General of the Bureau of Public Sector Reforms, Dr. Dasuki Arabi, joins us from our Abuja studio. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, DG. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to be around you. Absolutely. I know a lot of work has been done on, on this RSI report from 2012, but you play a vital role. You're in that committee that has 12 weeks to implement uh, some of these, uh, you know, points that was raised uh, by uh, the, the president's aide there. Interestingly, your name is also mentioned, and that's the BPSR, is also mentioned in some of those reforms. Uh, the what Servicom is meant to be subsumed under BPSR. But I'd like you to begin on this note, uh, Dr. Rabi. There are a lot of people who are skeptical about this because the Jonathan administration picked it up, didn't implement it. Uh, the, in fact, the Jonathan administration essentially was vital to this. But the Buhari government also picked this up. Nothing came out. We only saw committees and white paper. And yet again, the Tinubu government is doing the same. Is this going to really happen in 12 weeks, Dr. Rabi? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me take you back to, to history. Why was the Orosa Union Committee constituted in the first place? It was constituted a response to the global call for change and uh, the need for nations to respond to socio-economic problems uh, all over the world. Now, the, the report or the committee was set up to rejig the, the public service to put the uh, position of MDAs in their proper place so that we'll have more efficient uh, ministries, departments, and agencies of government. Um, uh, so I want to clear this notion of people that think uh, the Oros Union Committee is just out to reduce the size of ministries and get people out of their, their jobs. Uh, in the case of uh, implementation, we are very glad that the president has taken this bold decision to implement this report after many years. But as you said, not that nothing has been done uh, about it. Actually, uh, truly, there were delays in implementation. The three last committees that were reconstituted by His Excellency President uh, Muhammad Dubari were basically aimed uh, uh, out to look at agencies that were created after Orosanye report. Now, with that report, with that work that was done, we had an updated version of the Orosanye report, which His Excellency President Bola Ametinibu has approved for uh, implementation. Uh, a committee has been constituted. You had the advisor of the president giving some highlights of it. I'm confident that that report will be uh, implemented. However, implementation, uh, as we have said in the various reports and the committees that we have worked, is not going to be done uh, in such a way that it was done in 2005, 6, and 7, when uh, civil servants were resized. The government has learned quite a lot of things out of it. And one of the things that we need to do as we move forward is to have an effective strategic, uh, strategy to communicate with the citizens, labor, uh, public, other uh, sectors of, 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 of government, including the development partners who are interested parties in this activity and interested parties in Nigeria. Uh, another key player that uh, is being considered for active uh, participation in this process is the legislative arm of, of government. Of course, you know, some of the agencies to be merged or scrapped have uh, laws backing them. So government is going to get back to them. And that is why I have, over the years, led several, uh, several delegations to the a legislative arm of government to build this bridge between uh, executive and legislature, specifically 
to address this. And I want to inform you and Nigerians that the legislative arm is working with us closely, and they have even gone forward to create a committee in the House of Reps saddled with uh, oversight of reforms and institutional changes within the, the public service. So I'm confident uh, it's going to be implemented. All right, I, I wanted to go to, <clears throat> Doctor, I wanted to go to a, a particular, <clears throat> excuse me, a particular detail because there are so many things we need to find out as far as this Aronsia report is concerned. And we're hoping that uh, the government will walk the talk as you promised. And we're also looking at how much will be saved at the end of the day. Some people did calculations and say it's not anything beyond maybe 300 billion naira annually and all of that. So, but I wanted to zoom in on a particular item on that report, which is the 39th item that has to do with the Ministry of Aviation and get your take <clears throat> whether this is part of the way to go or it is overreaching because we're going to go item by item. I guess that's what your committee would do. But the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Nigerian Civil Aviation uh, Authority and the Meteorological, Nigerian Meteorological Agency, the recommendation by the committee says the trial of these uh, agencies, NAMA, NCA, NIMET, and all of that, should be merged into one body called the Federal Civil Aviation Authority. Government accepted that recommendation. Say government accepts from the white paper, uh, but I know that Center for Social Justice does not accept that position because of the rating and all of that. I'm asking this, will this be part of the things you look at to cut costs or otherwise, or we're still going to retain it? I'm being specific now to specific sectors. Well, thank you very much for, for that question. You know, we have, we have three, uh, four reports now. The main Orasanye report, mm. Goni Aji report, <clears throat> Ama Pepo report, Ebele Okeke report. Now, the announcement that was made by the Federal Executive Council through the advisor to the president has not given us full details of what and what is going to happen around the recommendations made. But I'm sure whatever... Uh, is stated in the report that has been considered by the Federal Executive Council is going to be uh, uh, implemented. Now, let me guide us and all of us that these are not decisions that were taken uh, just overnight. They are decisions that, that were taken after a lot of consultations uh, have, have been done. In any case, I don't want to speak for the committee that is going to be inaugurated, but uh, I want Nigerians to... Uh, be confident that the committee is going to look at things objectively and implement decisions uh, in the best interests of our country, Nigeria. DJ, I'd like you to speak to a, relate, to a related issue. Two issues now from the announcement of the federal government's decision. Uh, yesterday we spoke with a member of the uh, civil society which is in the vanguard of the advocacy for the implementation of the Orosai report. And they say that, look, the agencies that really, you know, would go a long way in cutting cost of governance are not listed in the announcement made by the federal government. And we can look at, you know, why we have the ICPC and the EFCC, you know, for instance. So um, if, we, if you look at those agencies and the ones are mentioned by um, Jeffrey that are not listed, how far would this really go if it were implemented? And uh, how much really will this uh, be, will the federal government be saving from this exercise? So those two issues, uh, if you could speak to them, DG. Well, 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 thank you very much. We cannot assess uh, at this point how much will be saved because we don't have, the committee has not been inaugurated. We don't have uh, the approvals of the Federal Executive Council to us. Possibly after the committee has been inaugurated, we'll have uh, those, uh, those details. And the comments that people are making around which agency is, uh, is going to uh, save money for Nigeria, well, well that is uh, up to them. The committee has worked diligently for the last three committees, worked for almost uh, six weeks uh, uh, on, on each side of, of the committee. And we have looked at the various issues concerning uh, reducing cost of governance. An agency may look very small or tiny, uh, in the face of people that are, are outside. But when you look at their budget, you know that it's, it's mighty. Uh, small in size, but mighty in budgetary 
allocation and, and spendings. So the, the assurance we are going given the civil society is Bureau of Public Service Reforms as a member of the Committee on Open Government Partnership will collaborate, will work with them. And uh, if you recall what the advisor said, that as a first step, they are implementing this. Orosonye is gone beyond uh, uh, scrapping margin of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. It has called for uh, restructuring of, of ministries and agencies. It has called for uh, management and staff audit of the entire uh, federal public uh, service. It has called for restructuring of, these, uh, uh, of some key ministries of, of government. So uh, something positive is going to come. My, my message to Nigerians is let them be patient, let them allow the, the, the task team to be integrated, and something positive is going to come out of this uh, wonderful work. Recall, my sister, that we have been driving this uh, exercise for, for many years, so everybody is anxious, is happy that something positive is going to come out of it. At the end of all this work that we are doing, uh, we are urging Nigerians to consider Nigeria first before themselves. So quite a number of issues raised, and I, I think this, for some, they think it's a distraction, by the way, uh, because they saw that Labour was going to protest, and just the night before the protest, this announcement was made. So naturally, there are a lot of people who were skeptical, thinking, hmm, is this government trying to distract us from uh, the issues? But I'd like you to speak to this point that has also been raised. So this report was uh, ready in 2012. As of 2012, even the mobile phones that came out then are no more in use now. The Naira to the dollar at that time was 150. Now it is, you know, almost 2,000 Naira. But the point I'm trying to make is things have since changed. Even a child at that point uh, is probably done with university now. Some of them have gotten married. So things have since changed. And people have said the recommendations from that report may just be outdated. So uh, what do you say to people who think we are implementing 2012 in 2024, when the realities have changed since then. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, government had taken note of, of of those concerns, and that was why the three committees, uh, Goni Aji Committee, Ama Pepe <coughs> Committee, Ebele Okeke Committees, were set up, and they were basically set up to one look at the agencies that were created after the. Orosonye report was submitted. Uh, secondly, to look at those decisions of Orosonye that were taken uh, as at that time and uh, uh, get them uh, updated vis-a-vis -vis the long period it has uh, taken for us to implement. And I want to inform Nigerians that uh, some aspects of the report, even before this time, have been implemented. Now, example, when you take the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit that was under EFCC. About three years ago or two years ago, it became a, a, an office of, on, on its own. And the privatization of river basin development authorities was part of the recommendations of Orosanyi. Some aspects of this have been, have been done. Uh, quite a number of things have been done. When you look at the, the removal of some regulatory agencies out of national budget, a Minister of Finance had driven this uh, last year into, 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 into this year. So the three committees updated the Orosonye report, and that is what is going to be implemented by government. So it's not really obsolete, it's up to date. You know, and <clears throat> when you talk about uh, disruption, when you talk about disruption uh, and, and label, um, uh, we have learned. Uh, and this is learning not out of the books, out of experience. Uh, driving, right sizing in 2005, six, and seven, uh, we had problems because the labor, uh, trade unions, the legislative arm, um, citizens were not carried alone. I'm assuring you that the committee is going to take the interests of everybody, carry everybody around to drive uh, uh, this process. Now, the issue of uh, disruption, I don't know whether I'm not a politician, uh, unfortunately for me, but I don't know whether it was a strategy to, to do that. But you know, the, the advisor to the president did not say it's going to be implemented 27 and 28. It just says it has been approved and a committee is, has been constituted. So implementation and work will start after inauguration. 
But I think there are two different things. So, DG, uh, one of the things that is also of concern is how this will work out eventually, how things will play out in terms of personnel. Uh, because if you look at the intent, besides cutting costs, it's also to streamline efficiency and to make government more functional. And given the bureaucracy, the bog of bureaucracy that we see within government entities, these same people that government has said will not lose their job will now either be rotated, redeployed, and all of that movement. Uh, what attitudinal change are we expecting within that space? Because if it's just changing and reducing and subsuming and all of this movement, and the attitude remains the same, this aspiration for efficiency is going to be a far cry. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, recall that we have the National Strategy on Public Service Reforms, and pillar four of that strategy is looking at cultural reorientation of the attitude of uh, public servants. And the, the FCIP strategy that is driven by the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation is also looking at that issue of attitudinal change to work by, by Nigerians. We are always uh, per passing this message through. Let's be happy and glad that government has picked us out of 220, 215 million to work for citizens of Nigeria. So that enough should make us to be patriotic, to deliver the goods expected out of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. In terms of efficiency, we have been driving a lot of uh, reforms and changes within the, the public service that are all aimed at um, uh, 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 improving the efficiency of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. Well, some of us may, from outside the service, may feel that we have not uh, gone where, where we should be. But I am confident uh, to, in, in telling you that if you look at the public service 30 years ago and what it is today, we have really changed, we have improved, and we are improving. I recall that Nigeria has um, um, an approved e-government master plan which is looking at digitalizing the work process within the, 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 the public service. Also, we have approved blog adoption of blockchain technology in, in public service uh, delivery. Now, digitalization of work process is going to improve efficiency uh, of ministries, departments, and agencies uh, uh, of government. Part of the reforms of implemented is opening the, the system so that uh, our civil society groups like Serap and others will be able to work with us, charge us, ask us questions, and demand for excellence in, 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 in service delivery. The Bureau of Public Service Reforms is working with quite a number of civil society uh, groups that are helping us to jig out ex excellent policy briefs that government is, is looking at. And uh, I don't think this issue is one of um, the, the the renewed hope agenda is basically all the items are looking at reforms, 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 and changes. And you can see that the president and commander in chief, His uh, Excellency Ola Ahmed Tinubu, is every second talking about reforms. Anywhere he goes, he's talking about reforms. And when you look at the meeting he had with the head of service, permanent secretaries, and some director generals, and indeed, it was again to pass this message that citizens are expecting the best out of uh, MDAs. And indeed, DG, those reforms are, are critical. Speaking of which, um, if we look closely at the announcement by the special advisor to the president, two agencies are to be scrapped, um, 15, I believe, are to be merged, nine to be subsumed, while four are to be relocated. Now, in relation to Jeffrey's question, it's... Either way you look at it, it's a bitter pill to swallow. What is the component of job loss in this um, implementation of the report? Um, how is the federal government dealing with this vis-a-vis uh, -vis your initial uh, position that the government is carrying labor along, you know, particularly amid the uh, economic hardship that the country is currently facing? Well, thank you very much. When the first report was submitted, uh, it was clearly stated that government will and should ensure minimum loss of jobs in process of adopting uh, those uh, recommendations. Also, when the three committees that uh, came up 
2023 and 2022, the same message was passed. And the Minister of Information has passed this message. There will be minimal loss of jobs, and he said uh, government workers should not fear loss of, of, of jobs. So, again, I, want, I don't want to uh, preempt the, 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 the committee. I'm sure we'll be uh, briefing the public as we start our, our work. And uh, labor is going to be part and parcel of this entire process. But if two agencies are to be scrapped, inevitably there will be job losses. Can you tell us exactly how many jobs are going? Oh, Orosa Yen's uh, recommendation says you scrap the, the, the agencies and move the staff to where their services will be required. <laughs> so there's the parastatals on the one hand. Again, people are trying to figure how would this subsuming relocation really cut costs? Will it not also Managing. incur mm -hmm. more costs, uh, have overlapping uh, functions and the rest? Perhaps you want to speak to that. But a lot of people are then saying, okay, the MDAs, they're just a little part of this conversation. We also have, you know, the, 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 the politicians themselves, the, the, the National Assembly, all of those, um, you know, we have bicameral legislature, for example, there's a conversation around that. But the money spent on all of that, is that also part of the conversation? So we'll look at this, uh, well, from a whole gamut, the aides to the president, you know, other governors and the rest, where you can have sometimes tens, dozens, and all of them doing the same thing sometimes. So is that also part of the conversation so we can really approach this holistically? Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you take um, an agency that has a budget of uh, one billion naira capital, a running cost of 800 million, example, that is subsumed by, 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 by another agency, that, that uh, uh, capital expenditure and overhead running cost of 801 one billion is definitely uh, uh, going away. So what is going to remain will be the aspects of uh, uh, personnel cost that uh, will be uh, assumed or will be taken over by the uh, ministry or the agency that is uh, uh, subsuming. You recall our experience, uh, uh, gentlemen and lady, on when we scrapped uh, NAPEB. Uh, we scrapped NAPEB, it, it went off, and the, uh, the staff were, were properly placed where, where they, they belong to. So I think... The, whatever decision is taken in terms of merger, scrapping, and demerging, definitely yeah. <clears throat> there will be cost benefits that will come to, to us as, uh, as Nigerians. Now, the Goniaji Committee had also gone further to recommend that a political appointees should be guided by the circulars of federal government that determines the number or restricts the number of persons that are appointed as, uh, as, as aides. Of course, you know, a lot of circulars have been uh, issued by the Office of the Secretary to the government on this, and uh, it is expected that uh, they are all abiding by, 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 by that. Now, the, the legislative arm of, of government, as I stated, is working closely with us and the, and the executive arm, especially the new committee uh, constituted on public, on public and institutional uh, uh, reform. So... Um, they, their buy-in is going to be obtained. Right, and I think there is, going to be, there is going to be this national call for all of us to make DG. sacrifice in any way we can to improve. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, apologies, please. Uh, we're totally out of time. But we, we needed to uh, use the opportunity that you're here to throw in all the questions. But you have to answer this, please, in 30 seconds. But can I ask the question? I know you touched on it because the number of aides we had for governors and the president is a lot. Even when we heard the president say he's going to cut down is that uh, people that work with him in travel, we haven't seen so much, at least from <clears throat> a layman's perspective. Is this committee also going to, if it's not overreaching, recommend to the president that the number of ministries is even too much? 48 ministries. What is Nigeria doing in 48 ministries when we're struggling with our finances? Isn't that something we need to consider as well? 48 ministries. Well, these are, these are all part of the recommendations made uh, by those three committees that reviewed the, the Orosanye report. 
So let's uh, again give the, the committee chance to be inaugurated and all details will be made available. But you can see that government has done quite a lot in the last six months to reduce uh, 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 spendings in terms of uh, who supports uh, a minister, a permanent secretary, or, or uh, the president right. and the vice president themselves. All right. uh, if you look at their travels, they have reduced the number of people that travel with them. Okay. When it comes to states and local governments, I think that is out of our, our, right, our jurisdiction. Okay. Okay. But okay. the call we are making is... Go ahead, just land uh, on your thoughts. For all Please. Nigerians... To, Yes, for all Nigerians to look at Nigeria first before themselves, work and support the committee, support government on these laudable initiatives. At the end of the day, we believe that the common man on the street is going to benefit out of this uh, initiatives. Right. Kade, what, well, what, Dr. Dasuki Arabi, yeah. well, I have to thank you so much. We can never exhaust uh, the questions, yeah. really. But the beauty of this is that thank we you. have 12 weeks, so from time to time, we can even be coming to you every other day to yeah. ask <laughs> Dr. Abi, how far have we come uh, this What's the progress report? What's the progress? <laughs> because that's what governance is about. We have but, to appreciate you for showing up. Yes, but we've carried it before. Let's, I, I wanted Thank to say 48 it's, it's ministers, not ministries. That, right. that, right. I wanted to say 48 ministers. Yes, right. I, I need to put down record. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Dasuke Arabi, the DG BPSR. Thank you so much for your time. And we we'll look forward to having this conversation Thank again. You. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you. There you have it. So this is by no means the end of the conversation. But we'll go to break now. And when we return, you may have heard Bukola dropping some lines early <laughs> on on the show. So we're really going and to explore to, and this. And due to popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to explore this further uh, in a few seconds. We have Eobliss Goretti joining us just about a couple of seconds. You don't want to miss this for anything. So stay right here on The Morning Break.